Currently in the automotive industry, we have a lot of different powertrain choices. You have your pure gasoline internal combustion options, you have hybrids, mild hybrids, conventional hybrids, plug-in hybrids, range extended electric vehicles, and pure EVs. And they all have their various pros and cons, but a realm where there's a lot of potential for innovation is plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. They bring some pros from both sides of the spectrum. Today we are with Magna checking out this. It may look like a regular Range Rover Evoque, but under the skin, this is a test bed for various powertrain technologies. This has a little bit of everything. A gas engine, it's got a dual clutch transmission, electric motor up front, electric motor in back, ability to do torque vectoring, lots of really cool tech. We're gonna get up close with a subject matter expert. He's gonna show us some of the cool things, talk about what's under the skin with this Magna E-Telligent Command drivetrain demonstrator and then we're gonna get to drive it and see what it's like. So we've hopped in the car with Will from Magna. What's your role? I'm a program manager for North America. But well, you did a lot of the integration with this thing, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've been involved a lot with the systems integration for our electrified products. So a lot of the demonstrator vehicles that we make, um, I get the pleasure of calibrating, tuning, and uh, you know making sure that all of that hardware comes to fruition on the track. Because there is quite a bit of complexity here with this demonstrator, because <laughs> it's two electric motors, a five-speed dual clutch transmission, a gas engine, and then all the control for everything and all of that. So yeah. you want to give me the quick elevator pitch summary. What exactly are we in? right now yeah absolutely it's our version of what a uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle could look like um, and what we've done is we've leveraged a few different technologies that we currently have today in the marketplace and combine them into maybe a different style approach that either you know the customers or you know everyday drivers may want to use or leverage um, for their needs some of those technologies include as you mentioned the dual clutch transmission we've taken our base dct and we've paired it with an electric motor 120 kilowatts to be exact okay. and we bolt it to the engine and what that does is that allows us to drive either in a full ice driving scenario as we're used to today with a regular vehicle more traditional vehicle or we're able to do a hybrid approach so you could drive in pure ev operating mode or you could do a blended strategy between the engine and um, the electric motor give you the best fuel efficiency or the best power depending on what you're looking for some of the other technology in the rear of the vehicle we've integrated a, an electric motor as well that actually has twin clutches to do torque vectoring okay so more sporty gives you a dynamic benefit of actually getting around the track a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficiently um, in an all-wheel drive based vehicle uh, so with all of that, we actually have to do all the software controls for the electric motor, the inverters, and then as you said as well, the, the vehicle controls to do torque proportioning front to rear and then left to right with that torque vectoring axle in the rear. So yeah. it's, it's a, quite a complex project. That's a lot because there's no mechanical connection between the front and rear powertrain setup. No. It's fully disconnected, so you need to make sure that talks to each other and is happy. Yep. And then I want to dig in up front because the up front is essentially a unit that you could throw into a vehicle in just a front wheel drive application, right? Yeah. So. Is there any instances where the ICE engine, the gas engine can drive the wheels just on its own without the electric motor? Yeah, you can absolutely drive with just the ICE. Because of these like two, there's a cool diagram. There's actually a really cool diagram with the two <laughs> clutch packs right there, right? Yeah, so the two clutches here are meant to represent the DCT clutches. Okay. And then you have a third clutch here which actually disconnects the engine. So you can open this up and drive with just the electric motor through okay. the gear train or you can close this and drive the ice uh, through the gear train and you can choose to spin the EM or you can choose not to. It depends on how you want to operate it. And then the ice engine can then charge the electric, the charge everything up while you're stationary or driving. Exactly. I can be stationary and charge with the electric motor in the engine or I can be driving on the road. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So we have it primarily set up so it drives in EM or EV mode. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time mm -hmm. just to benefit the end user of having the the better fuel efficiency or fuel economy gotcha. of a hybrid vehicle okay but it's truly up to kind of the customer how we would want to tune this and set this okay. up okay um, but it, it shows really the technology in a number of different ways that it could be used uh -huh. and as you were getting at the flexibility to be able to charge while driving charge while stationary drive in a hybrid mode drive in just a nice mode or drive in a pure ev drive mode is a really cool part of this technology Let's do some driving. Yeah, absolutely. So this is definitely intended for more performance applications, right? That's the thought. Yeah, this is set up to be more of a performance vehicle. Hence um, the helmets, and we're going on a racetrack. And you'll also note that uh, I'm not driving, and I'm sitting on the left side. So this, this <laughs> clearly came from the UK. This vehicle is a right-hand drive Range Rover Evoque. Yeah, it throws you off a little bit, but um, we've been able to develop global powertrain solutions that kind of fit all different markets. So we really look at the European market, the Asia Pacific market, and then the North America market as well. Um, so you have to be able to adapt to all different types of driving uh, vehicles and chassis. Okay. Total combined output between 
Electric motor up front, which is 120 kilowatts, 160 in the back, and then the gas engine. What's the total system output you guys are estimating? Yeah, we have about 5,000 newton meters on the front axle because okay. that's one powertrain, and that is the engine and the e motor combined. Yeah. And then in the rear, we have about 3,700 newton meters to the rear. All right, what is that in like freedom units? Like, <laughs> we'll have to do the conversion afterwards. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the driving. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a lot. It's like once you convert the kilowatt itself to power, I mean, it's over 500 horsepower. So we'll use a combination of ICE and EM uh, here. So we'll use the electric motors and the gas engine to do the acceleration during the hard launches. When you start to you know, throttle down and we're coasting down into a turn here, we're actually just regenerating through the electric motors okay. to add back into the battery. There's no need to have the ICE connected to the wheels there. And we can do that very quickly with the different uh, uh, clutches oh, wow. in that DCT transmission. For the clutches in the back, for the torque factoring for the electric motor, you can send a substantial amount of power to just an individual wheel, right? Yeah, so as we come through this turn, it's a left-hand turn here, we're loading up that uh, right rear tire. I'm gonna send more torque to that right rear tire via those clutches mm -hmm. to help steer the car naturally around that corner. It's gonna be less aggressive feedback on your steering wheel. Your front end's not gonna slide or walk out on you. Um, and you can really use the dynamics um, of the vehicle itself to help benefit that, that turn in performance. It's a lot better than brake based ones too, right? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. S sending the torque to the outer one. It is uh, true to or inner, torque yeah. factoring, absolutely. All right. So here's a question. How does this system compare and why did you guys go for this versus like a range extended powertrain? Because that's seemingly becoming a little more popular where you just have the electric motors driving the wheels all the time and an engine acting as a generator. Yeah, it's definitely an important technology um, that I, I think we see in the market today and, and maybe where the market's even going. But with the benefit of this system, we're able to focus on a performance driving aspect. We're able to get some charging performance out of the EM while we're driving. And then we can also use the ICE engine to power the wheels if let's say you're out of your battery and you're going on a long road trip. I see. So you get yeah. the benefit of all three different systems kind of in one here. Mm -hmm. And this is in an approach that we haven't really seen, right? We haven't really seen that 400 volt DCT platform that has serial and parallel operating modes to it. So we wanted to be able to give the best possible options mm -hmm. um, without limiting ourselves to one type of style of system. Okay. From a efficiency standpoint, this thing has a 20, well, 20 ish kilowatt hour battery pack. Yeah, it's, it's 21 kilowatt hour usable. So it's okay. slightly, slarted, slightly larger than that. It's a prototype battery pack, but we've been able to demonstrate the performance of this because it has enough output, but it also has enough range that we can get uh, 110 kilometers of all electric driving range. Which is about just 70 miles. Yep. About 70 miles, all EV. And then if you need more, it just engine kicks in. Or if you are commuting less than that, you can just simply plug it in and keep going. Well, a little bit of sideways, you can feel the rear a little bit. Yeah, it allows you to get out just enough to get yeah. that sporting driving event. The rear kicks out a little bit, but not so much that you feel out of control. Ever. Gotcha. So, what do you say we let you get in the driving yeah, seat? Yeah, we're on a, a racetrack, I wanna try this thing out. <laughs> so this whole time you're driving, the DCT transmission is shifting in that background. We're running through a number of different gears and it should be seamless. You should never really fear, feel a gear shift. You get that smooth, consistent, fast shift that we come to know and love out of dual clutch technology. So it's a five speed, which is an interesting choice because you know everybody's just more and more and more speeds. For example, like you got nine speeds, 10 speeds now, right? Why five? Yeah, five's the magic number here. One, because of packaging, but two, because we can uh, we can optimize the, um, the gear ratios okay. to give you that low end torque performance and acceleration based on the EM and the engine. And then your top speed requirement will also uh, you know, you can still hit that with an optimized fifth gear ratio. So Interesting. it's kind of the right spread with the right technology. And then removing those two gears from, let's say a traditional, you know, seven speed DCT allows you to package that EM uh, in the transmission a lot better. All right, we're on a track and a right hand drive Range Rover Evoque, which is not something I ever expected to do. It does take a second to get used to like, where you're positioning the car when you're in right-hand drive. <laughs> it makes your entries into the corners just a yeah. little bit different. Like, oh, I'm closer to the apex than I'm used to. But honestly, this thing feels extremely nice. Yeah, it gives you the kind of comfort and uh, confidence that you can take all of these you know, curves and turns at the speed you're really going at yeah. without feeling like you're gonna get out of control. It's pretty quick too. Yeah, 147 kilowatt engine, 120 kilowatt transmission, and 160 kilowatt rear axle. Yeah, uh, all we'll those really add up. We really get this thing going pretty quick. Oh, is that top speed? 
Are we we're limited to 135 kilometers? Yeah, we've software limited the vehicle to 135 <laughs> due to the prototype. <laughs> uh, okay, that does make sense. <laughs> but it was very quick getting up to that speed. And Magna does some really cool stuff. If you're not familiar, there was a Ferrari 12 Cilindri, the Dodici Cilindri, yep. and a G580 because you guys developed the dual clutch for the Ferrari and the electric motors for the electric G-Wagon, right? Yeah, yep, we do both of those. So that's uh, that's some pretty good resume padding right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Magna's got a lot of history in a lot of different products, specifically four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive products, transmissions, and then components for other, uh, other applications of the vehicle. Um, just in the powertrain division alone. So yeah. the number of cars that our technology touches is, is uh, quite diverse. Yep. And like this would see benefits in low mu, like friction, low friction situations, right? Absolutely. So we do a lot of our testing up in, um, you know, colder climate areas in the snow and in the ice to make sure that all of the powertrain components that we make are performing as expected or better than the customer would ever need in yeah. any situation. And living somewhere where we do in Michigan in the winter, that's important. Yeah, all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is a must for a lot of people in their everyday lives. Magna also has a system called DHD Duo that brings two electric motors for hybrid and plug-in hybrid applications. This is more for improving range and efficiency for mass market passenger cars and SUVs. It can also drive in full electric, serial, and parallel drive modes depending on the driving conditions and demands. It is designed to be scalable to different power levels and match different number of transmission gears, and it's very packaging efficient, so it can be used on existing internal combustion engine platforms. In this video, you see how the electric motor is able to either do all the driving if there's enough charge in the battery, get assistance from the engine when needed, and also do regen braking. While the Intelligent Command powertrain demonstrator is leaning much more towards performance applications, this DHD Duo system is for those front-wheel drive-based cars and SUVs that are prioritizing range and efficiency. These kinds of hybrid powertrains are definitely becoming more popular as an option that brings the best of both worlds between EVs and traditional internal combustion engines. Well, thank you so much for the experience, getting yeah. to try it out and learn about the Magna Intelligent Command Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle Demonstrator. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Which is a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Imagine that as an acronym. This is really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, learning a little bit about this system. We'll see it in a future car probably at some point. We'll see. Thanks for watching.